This is my friend Ed, uh, who has a J42 and is primarily, or he's done some ocean passages with other people. He's primarily coastal cruising this boat and he's decided to go with a Watt and Sea, uh, which is interesting because the only other input we've got on the Watt and Sea is from Andy Shell, but Andy primarily does long passages and Ed seems to be getting a good result from this. So, uh, but there's stuff to know, which he's right. doing. I knew I wanted to get rid of the generator. So it was big cut in con energy consumption or add some energy generation. Oversimplification, but it came down to a, a wind vane or the Watt and C. Um, the wind vane obviously meaning no auto no mass to run while I'm So you're saying your, your big consumption is underway. It's underway. So yeah, that's when I'm using all the powers underway. I got electronics turned on and you know a lot of times the radar's on and the plotters and all the gadgetry going uh, at anchor it's really not it's really so not for the person who says while i'm at anchor i want to have a big freezer and a starlink going 24 7 yeah but the key point to people to take away is that you're very conservative about your power use at anchor and yeah. you don't and you said the other night um we were chatting and it just filled us in ed said that he actually very rarely plugs in too so that's not part of this power uh he's plugged in here at our wharf this is the first time i've plugged the boat in in two years right. about what have you got in it cost wise oh uh, including the swanky mount it's probably six grand us right like that. so it's not an inexpensive option and then installation, what kind of stuff did you have to do to get this working right and install it to spec? Yeah, installation was very straightforward. Um, I decided to go with their mount because it allowed me to angle this properly rather than coming up with shims so that when it's down, I could get the vertical, more or less vertical on the, on the leg. Right, so you can adjust that with that semicircle gadget there. That that's what allows you to uh, semicircle bracket. I can see it's got a groove in it. So, yep, yep. Yeah, that's, that's okay. it's 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 basically compression that that holds it there, and you know more stainless to polish, of course. And that's two bolts. So the the piece that's against the the transom is just it's on with two bolts, um, through bolted, do all the back fill of the core properly, backing plate. And then, based on the, the loads that Watt and C talks about this possibly putting on a transom, I did add a, a stringer in here, maybe overkill, but just to... So you five glass something in, inside I the did. boat? I did. I took some, it just straight, just marine plywood, and I fiberglass that on, basically with a shoe at the, the, the bottom of the hole, and then up the transom. But, so this is a reasonably fast boat. I mean, a J42 is going to reach seven knots very quickly much more quickly yep. than most cruising boats it's a boat that if memory serves its phr of ratings like 62 something like yeah, that Yeah, depending on the region i don't follow them too closely yeah. but it's yeah it's it's yeah, I, slow i mean that's quick yeah, yeah so and and that's a just a digression that you i think this thing really comes into play at seven knots if you look at the the ch chart that wattensee provides i found the actual the energy production matches that pretty well so that so the curve really kicks in when you hit about six and a half seven knots uh, with this prop on it i'm supposed to be getting about 15 amps at i think seven and a half knots or so and that's I, it's seven oh, that's and a half, a 12 eight knots. wow that. that's great yeah yeah so you know we can talk about the decision to make this part of my energy management coastally but um it's been performing as promised there. So for a, a long day of sailing, it will actually charge the batteries. I can have everything running, including radar. So for in fog, like the last couple of weeks, or doing a multi-day trip and we're going overnight, at which point it might be down for days on end. It's actually net positive. So your net Most is so, the and the fridge is running. Fridge is running, radar. Autopilot's running. You're yep. single-handed a lot, so yep. all of that kit's running. Plotter, Everything's going. Um, and you're not having, uh, and you end the day with more than you started with. 
typically. Um, the solar panels help a bit, and I've got to be going seven and a half, eight knots all day. Right. So if I'm, and basically, I, I pick it up at anything less than five knots, and I, I will sail around at three to four knots. If I, not right. trying to race weather or anything. Um, what about drag? Do you notice that it slows the boat down when you put it in the water? That's what everybody. That's, that's the first question everybody has, yeah. and it's not really a factor for me. I'm not racing. Right. The energy is worth way more than whatever drag. But now she's the boat seems to be. I think it's fraction. It's it's so small that it's not something I notice. And you've got the big prop on, right? This is. I think this is the two forty. So right. they have a two hundred eighty millimeter, a two forty, and a two hundred. I think this is the two forty. Right, so the, so that's the middle that's option. That's the middle, yeah. Right, so you can you can mess with that, but I guess there would be diminishing returns. You could put a bigger prop on a slower boat, but there would be diminishing returns in that, wouldn't there, I guess? Yeah, it shows a bigger power curve, but again, you have to be going, yeah. really, seven knots before the curve starts to really turn up. Um, so unless you have, I mean, either you're going to have to have a 50-foot boat yeah. of typical cruising boat performance, Yeah. Or you're going to have to have a boat like a J42 that crew, that performs at, at probably, I don't know, a typical cruising boat is, you know, goes most places at six, five and a half to six knots. This boat goes place, most places like like our uh, J109 in the background. They rate about the same. Yeah. Um, goes places most of the time at six and a half to seven. Right. Yeah. Is that, really, is that fair? To, you have to be sailing around at seven or eight knots a lot to make it really... Right, worth really the money. Worth it. I mean, it, it it generates energy at five, six knots, but not so much that I think it, it'd be worth. I, I would probably do something different in the whole energy management. Sure, yeah, because you because you don't want to uh, blow six thousand bucks on something that doesn't solve a problem. And here's the yeah. here's here's the real kicker. Um, Ed tells me he was able to get rid of the generator because he had a generator on the boat, and that's really cool. Yeah, so the, the generator, which, yeah, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but it was just the, the weight and extra maintenance and extra diesel and the noise. I it just, I really honestly didn't really use it that much. And this is on a on a 42-foot uh, boat, yeah. so it's... That doesn't have yeah. a lot of space. Yeah. I mean, I think I used it like to run the air conditioning in the, bah in the Bahamas occasionally. Yeah. Uh, Sometimes, and I would use it, you know, on multi-day trips to... To charge, um, but my backup for charging is I already have a diesel engine, which I, I think I can think of one time really since I bought this that I um, ran the auxiliary to charge. And oh, so, okay. Now you you as as I mean you get you tend to move quite a bit, right? You're not a cruiser that sits on an anchor for three weeks, right? So that's that's the key. I mean, I've got enough solar to kind of keep me going at anchor but just barely and when we're in so if i sat here for three or four days in this fog i'd be getting i'd be probably needing to charge so that's what happened yeah. in newfoundland last year was and I, how many watts of solar do you have about 360. right but I, okay. obviously i never see that there's there's no good oh sure no i just no the, the just the the, here, yeah. the platform I, I, the actual rating of course, of yeah, course yeah. the you know what's delivered is usually half that or, or barely but they do well. I mean, on the right tack, on the right sunny day, they actually produce a, a, enough energy to contribute to this or even sometimes um, make me a net zero or almost net positive. Right. So here's the, here's the one, you know, the elephant in the room on energy management is as a cru coastal cruiser on this coast, as you know, you range what from the Bahamas to Newfoundland, yeah. right? Over, was it five years now? Something so like that. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So on this coast, what what percentage of the time would you estimate you are motoring? And this is a, and let's keep in mind this is a performance sailboat, so she's going to sail a lot less breeze than many cruising boats would. Uh boy, that's that's really tough. A lot of it depends on like schedule and I. My habit is to not go if I can't sail all oh, okay. most of the day. So I. I I try to do that. Sometimes I make the mistake of putting myself on a schedule and I'll motor. It's rare, you know, over the past five years that I would spend two days in a row motoring. 
So. How about okay? That's 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 great because I mean you know a lot you know a lot of cruises probably I mean the real realistic fact is that a lot of cruises motor at least fifty percent of the time. A sa sailboat cruises motor at least fifty percent. Yeah, of the time. if I'm on a passage, I will. So I've done you know two trips down from Connecticut to like Georgia or North Carolina with buddies, and we'll time it so we can sail. We get once we get around Hatteras because we're sailing out under a cold front, things kind of die and then we'll wind up motoring for a day and then the yeah on on, on delivery but when you're uh, when you're cruising coastally not so much yeah i typically go and i'll just kind of stay where i am i can't always do that but so it's not like i never motor but the, the motor runs um you know i off i typically probably more than half the time i'll use it to go on and off anchor so it's running uh, that's where I, that's where actually i was going is that the motor usage of going in and out of Boy, harbor and everything else is wide averaging? If you go out for a, if you go out for a forty mile passage, say you're leaving here and going to Halifax, you're probably going to use the motor what an hour in that process. Yeah, for sure. Depending, yeah, like let's say yeah. I, I probably wouldn't use it much here, but say I went up to Armdale or, yeah. or down. The so that'll Island. play up play a part in in yeah. getting the batteries. So back 170 up. amp alternator was part of my part of the design there so that you know if that runs for an hour that that tops it off I'm a I should also say I'm very low on the energy consumption level I have a fridge I'll charge a laptop that I don't use that much but it, does that fridge have a big free a freezer but it's not it has it's, no freezer I no can freeze fr things in the lower corner if they're touching the plate <laughs> right exactly I mean that's something I've said you know I've, I've got a post on the site saying you know one of the things that's going to push you into generator or I think these things may change that is the minute you say I want to freeze 50 pounds of meat yeah um, and keep it frozen then the whole equation changes uh, yeah quickly. and and that'll probably I am looking to take the boat to Europe next spring the one after so that you know there's going to be some shape or form a small freezer right but again, with this thing down in the water and the solar during the day, I don't. I don't think there's an issue now. You, you, it's a, it's a big part of the energy management plan. So if it flakes out, that's asset. It's got the diesel for backup. But. You know, I think that's the other thing that that you know people sort of miss, is that if it's part of an edge case, they say yeah. the diesel is part of an edge case. That I that gets used very occasionally when you get unlucky, like the last couple of weeks, we, the weather has just sucked here. Yeah, and we haven't seen the sun in what ten days, and uh, you know, or if something breaks, you know, that's a perfectly sensible um, energy management yeah. plan. So you end up using the diesel every day to charge for two weeks because the what sea croaked and yeah. you had to get it fixed. What uh, talking of which, um, I know Andy. Early on, and this was much earlier in the life of the Watsies, he had quite a lot of trouble with his. Have you had any trouble with this one? And has the company been good with? My trouble has been connections. So either I've initially, when I set it up, I didn't make a connection well. There are some there are probably 14 gauge wires into little compression terminals. I wound up putting pins on the wires, which is probably should have done at the gate. So those connections were a little finicky. Those are fine now. And then I recently had it flake, and it, it turned out to be the cable at the uh, converter. So, so it, connections yeah, I mean, the soft. connectors are always a problem. But yeah, that's not something the Watt and C can can knock on knock on wood. The generator's been solid mechanically. So can you just show us how it how it uh, how it drops down? Yeah, and I will say on my boat, it's it's a little it's a little kludgy because. Do need to unless you put it down before you're moving really fast. You do need some help getting it down into the water, and Watt and C actually has a, a kit that I have, which is a little block and tackle. I don't have a good place to, to put it, so I wind up running it. Okay, so you need some here. you need some mechanical advantage to push it down. Yeah, yeah. If it's gonna if it's gonna go to if it, you're gonna go down while the boat's moving. You do. Uh, a lot of times I'll just slow down and pull it down by hand, which works fine too. And then you lock, do you have to lock it off with a pin or something, or you can just nope. lock it off I, by. I, I don't. It's tight. the cam cleat locks it off. So right. this blue line. 
is basically what's holding it up. Right. Um, and once I pull this out of the cam cleat, it goes down. Oh, okay. So in its own way. Now, now it goes down vertical here, but when you go in seven knots, you've got the prop biting right. the water, and so it's it's not going to go down. So you've got to actually haul it down with this red line. Um, so it's a little tough to demonstrate, but it would be it would be laying out in the water, and you'd have to pull this red line, and I wind up rigging up the block and tackle across here, and if I need it, and snugging it down. But a lot of times, if I'm going slow, I can just manually pull it down. And this is the line, and this line, so I don't, I've never had to pin it. I just, this line holds it down, and I'll just do a round turn here and with some hitches and just as a backup, but I've not had it. All right. Well, a run of a day, rough. You're saying it could do what you get get over seven uh, knots, and you're getting 15 amps at 14, at 14 four volts right. or so. so they've got a basically a charge controller. Yeah. Can you can you program that, or do you need to There's program? Some it yeah, so you can oh, program. Two years, I can't remember exactly. But you you can program it for the voltage. A, I you believe want. there's a charge profile. Right, and program. then you can and then you can. Uh, and I guess if you feel like you're getting overcharged, you just pull it out of the water and stuff, right? And, yep. don't worry about it. and it's um, it's got a breaker, so it's um, used essentially. So you can turn it off from in the boat. And there's all sorts of stuff to read on it, whether it should spin freely or not spin freely. And it's got some brains around that that I, I can't remember. Off the right, but they're in the manual. People. It's in the manual, and the manual's pretty good. The and it seemed like they. You said that you. When you email them, they're pretty responsive, and in uh, that's that's the head office in France. Yes, from France, so extremely responsive, they, and patient. I, I, was having trouble troubleshooting this latest glitch where I was missing a phase, and you can tell because it starts to kind of grind and roar, um, and I couldn't figure it out, and I texted them or I emailed them, and they gave me some things to try, and, they, and we figured it out. Quickly. And uh, just one other thing that struck me, if you're in a place where you say, ah, I don't really want to leave this on the transom, um, you know, because it's pretty stealable and, and pretty fragile, um, is it relatively easy to get it off the boat? If, I guess you'd need the dinghy in the water or to be backed up to a dock or something like that. Well, you've got that ladder there. I mean, can you yeah. can you get it off the boat relatively easily? You, as long as the boat's stationary, yeah. It's, um, yeah, I meant, I meant so, yeah, uh, what, the other nice thing about this uh, this mount is that you, you could conceivably kind of put a lock on there. It's, it's, it might be tough to see, but this pin goes through the hinges, this Delran or wherever right. the hinges on the lot C. You pull this pin out and it's free. So you could put a line on here, pull the pin and just... Uh, yeah, that's what I was wondering and just, just uh, you know, lift it up. And, yep. uh, you yeah, you got to unscrew this and yeah. they've got a nice little cap that goes on it to keep it watertight when it's not plugged in. Yeah, it's let you get get rid of a generator, which is pretty cool, and yeah, so not and not run the engine much except unless you're running the engine for a reason. Yeah, yeah, and it's Another been great. Reason. I mean, a great example is the last we left Connecticut like three weeks ago, and we it's we've really had I think three days of sunshine since, and I we've been the batteries have been I don't think they've gone below seventy five percent, and that's with sitting here and there for. That, oh, what's your battery bank size? Just not that it matters in some ways, but go ahead. Yeah, it's uh, I've got uh, 316 amp hour carbon foam, the fireflies. Right, 316 amp hour total at 12 volts. Yeah, so I'm um, yeah. not.